Well, welcome back. And in the last tutorial, I showed you how to use NowRail to control some servos, as if you like the output. And I used uh, some of the time functions to actually move the servos. Today, we're going to start looking at how to build a control panel. Uh, so let's have a look at the webcam and see what we're looking at. So before you pass out and think, oh my goodness, what's he's done? Yes, I do have a lot of breadboards and these aren't all of them. So in the last tutorial, we were looking over at this side and we were using this ESP32 to control these servos. And I was using right over here, there's an ESP8266 that was um, sending out uh, commands based on time to move those servos. Now you can sort of ignore this section part, the centre section. This is actually part of the next upgrade, uh, which is to do with the, if you like, the panel control. But what we're looking at now is buttons. Now if I press this button here, you will see the servo just about off the bottom of your screen moving, and I can jump it backwards and forwards. And then if I press this next button, or these next two as you can see they move another servo now you'll notice various leds um, also flashing those are moving in response to the commands that are being sent so let's look at how this is built using if you like standard buttons so going to the digital town website for the resource that goes with the now rail project if we go down to standard pin functions the function we're going to be looking at is add standard pin button. So this is using a what I would call a standard pin. And if we just click over to the webcam again, if we look at these buttons, they are directly connected to the actual ESP32 board. Now obviously we could be using an 8266, but there's even less pins on my D1 Mini. But what I want you to think about is a standard pin is when you're connecting directly to the ESP32. Now connecting to the pins directly on the ESP32 is a very simple way of adding pins, but obviously we're limited to the number of pins. So if you're going to connect directly to the board, you're going to, you're going to be limited to what, 23, 24 pins, because some of these pins you use for other things. And of course, if you want uh, LEDs displaying the movement, then you're going to be able to add even less buttons. But this is very, very useful for very small projects. And I'm just going to show you how to quickly add your buttons into the code. So I've made a copy of the now rail sketch. Now you'll notice this particular version is zero underscore three. All of these functions I'm going to use today are in zero underscore two, but I'm doing some tests here for a new version that's coming out in the next day or so uh, with some extra functions. But let's get down to how we write the code. Now, one of the things for this particular function there's almost nothing that needs to be done. Uh, if we go down to the um, setup, this is where all the work is done. So let's just get our function from the Digital Town website. And this is the function we're going to use. And it's add standard pin button. So let's just copy that across. And one of the bits that we have to add when we're going to use this is the my layout dot prefix. So I'm going to add four buttons, uh, three buttons. So you might wonder why I've got this four times. I'll show you in a second. Let's just put the prefix in. And I'm going to comment the first one out just so that I can see what I'm doing now. With the uh, previous tutorial, I had set up my accessories on uh, addresses 2005 to 2008. So what we're going to do, um, because of the way I have got this connected, if we look at the pins that I'm using here, I'm using pin 13, P, 
pin 12 and pin 14 if we're looking at the um, the pin out for the uh, ESP32 let's just see if I can bring that up again so these are the three pins that we're going to be using to set this up right so pin 13 pin 12 pin 14 now the first button is going to control accessory number 2005 and this is going to be a double press button so what it's going to do is the first time I press it it's going to send an instruction of zero to accessory 2005 the second time I press it it's going to send an instruction of one so this means if you had one of these situations where you want to cut down on your buttons I just want to press it once to go one way press it once to go the other way this is the way that you would write the function now for the other buttons we're going to get it to control um, 2000 and address 2006 and then what we're going to do is we're going to put a value of zero you notice we have press one and press two so press one it sends zero press uh, two it sends one and of course it's going to go back to press one again this one no matter what press I give it's always going to send a zero and then this button is going to be the opposing button to send the command in the opposite direction so it's always going to send one that is it that's the code completed those standard buttons are now added so all we've got to do is compile it and upload it to the board hopefully I've remembered everything we wait expectantly still waiting one of the things just while we're waiting for this to be aware of is that you don't have to worry about the debounce with the buttons uh, now rail takes care of the debounce system for you uh, there is a way to alter it here we go we're uploading just press the button the boot button on the ESP32 and there we go we're all uploaded and now what I'm going to do is bring the output up and we're going to bring in the camera and the reason I want you to be able to see the output is as I press the button you can see the instruction being sent and you can see the servo bottom left moving every time I press it the servo moves if I now go to the other buttons hang on, there we go there's the movement now if I press the other button it goes back the other way now if I keep pressing the other button because it's always going to send a zero it's not going to move the servo so this is a case of swapping backwards and forwards you'll notice LEDs changing in the center section this is because uh, these are what I call panel functions that there's a lot more in version 3 this is so that when you press your buttons or do whatever you want you can now see the response on your control panel so standard buttons that's all there is to it now what we're going to do next is we're going to look at these chips here so let's look at these because we're limited in the number of buttons and if you want to build a really big control panel for a model railway you're going to want a lot more than just you know the pins that are on an ESP32 so let's look at how we can expand the number of pins so the way we're going to add these extra pins is to use what is called a shift register now if you go to the uh, now rail page on the digital town site just click on 4021 shift register pin functions that will then bring you down to this circuit diagram now these chips uh, you can get them on eBay at the moment in the UK they are 10 for five pounds so 50p each and for each chip you can add an extra eight pins now these chips daisy chain chip zero 
is the chip nearest to the ESP32 and obviously chip one, chip two. You can see then that there are three connections. Um, the blue wire is the data pin, orange wire is the latch pin, white wire is the clock pin. You can change obviously the pins that they are connected to, but just remember that you do have to have one of each of these. When we connect buttons to these or sensors, it is a bit of a strange system. I've put the pin out here. So pin zero is bottom left. Then it jumps up to pin one, pin two, pin three, back down to pin four, five, six and seven. Now, if you look at how the buttons are connected, I've got mine here with a pull down resistor. This obviously is just using a standard sort of push to connect button. If you want to use the stud and probe type system, all you do is put the connection in exactly the same way, but your probe would sort of bring its five volts. And this is sort of where your probe would touch. You would make that stud on your control panel. On the subject of voltage, of course, this isn't a 5 volt system. This is a 3.3 volt. So your probe would be bringing 3.3 volts in. Now, in the circuit diagram that we have here, the 3.3 volts is coming off the ESP32. Now, if you start adding six or seven of these chips and you've got endless buttons and pull down resistors, you may find that you are going to need a separate 3.3 volt power supply, in which case your positive would come in here, add your ground, and then remove this connection to the ESP32. Now we understand how the circuit's going to work. Let's look at the functions, and there are two very simple functions. The first one, just adds in the setup for the CD4021 shift register and it's passed the latch pin value, the clock pin value and the data pin value. These are the pins that you have connected to on your ESP32 and you can choose whatever pins you like for that. Then going down to adding the actual uh, button, very similar to using a standard pin button, except this time we take a chip value first, then the pin on the chip, then the accessory number, and then the, uh, the first press and the second press values. So when it comes to that pin, just remember that is the pin on the chip, not the pin on the ESP32. Once we understand these functions, and there is an example down here where I have set up the um, CD4021 using pins 12, 13, and 15, and then I've added three different items. So I've got chip zero, pin one is going to control accessory 10, and it is going to send a value of zero on the first press and one on the second press. Then I've done the same, but on chip one, pin zero, accessory 30, and whatever I press, it's always going to send zero. Again, chip one, uh, pin five, accessory 20, and it's going to send zeros again. So coming back to the code window, I have set up my CD4021 chip system. I'm using pins 2, 4, and 15. I've then added a number of items. I've got chip 0, pin 0, sensor or oh, accessory 2007 is the item that's going to be controlled. It's going to send a 0 with the first press, a 1 with the second press. I've then got a, another one, um, pin zero on chip one, that is going to send a command to 
accessory 2005 it's going to send a zero then a one now you'll notice I've also used pin zero and one for 2006 when a button is pressed you can actually get it to send more than one accessory command at a time. So this is not a bug. It's not an error or anything. This is quite OK. And then on my second chip on uh, pin, uh, so chip one, pin seven, accessory 2008 will receive a zero on first press and a one on the second press. Now, in my setup on the board at the moment, I have only got two chips. That is the standard in now rail. However, if you want to add more chips, you just need to go to the user setup. You will see here that the number of chips defaults to two and the number of buttons set up defaults to 30 because you can have more than one item per button. So if you wanted to add, say, 10 chips, just change that value to 10 and if you run out of buttons the system will warn you if you when you do and you can just increase this number appropriately so now that's all done let's get the code uploaded so let's press my little button and get it to upload Okay, so that's it. It's all uploading and we'll see how this now works. So here we are back at the breadboard and if we look we've got our original buttons and they are still working. And now what I've done is I've set up my pins just onto a set of headers that I'm going to touch with this wire as if I was using a stud and probe system. So if I click on this first one, as we can see, the servo is moving. That blue one up here. Then if you remember the second bit of code, I'd connected two servos on the same pin. And there we see them, hang on. We can see them both moving. And finally, the last pin here was connected to the second chip. And once again, we can see these things moving. Now, as I'm touching all this, obviously you're seeing lots of LEDs, um, lighting and you know, going out. Those are actually part of the next tutorial where, if you like, there's two sections to this. There is how you send instructions and then there's also how panel uh, mimic panels are created. So I'll do that in the next tutorial. So going back to our code, as you can see, it's a pretty simple system. Standard buttons connected to the board. It's just one function. If you need to use the shift register, because you need more buttons. It's just a case of setting it up, passing the various pins, and once again, creating your functions, and those in turn will send out the commands that you have set them to do. So I hope that's been useful to you, and if it is, please click the like and subscribe, and I'll get the panel update uh, video out as soon as possible. Bye for now.